My Catholic Family, St. Elizabeth of Hungary. Hey, look! It's a beggar. He's looking through the trash. What's he looking for? Food, definitely. Food from the garbage? Ugh, that's terrible. I can't understand how a person could live that way. Could you imagine if you were this poor? No, I really can't. Hey, are you guys gonna sign up for the contest the parish is organizing? Are you talking about the treasure hunt? Yeah, it's gonna be tons of fun. You have to follow all the clues hidden around the park until you find the treasure. Heard about it, sounds off. We're going to buy ourselves a compass. What for? So we can follow all the clues. They're all about the points of the compass. Well, that's silly. Oh, yeah? Totally, we don't need a compass. Right, we're like those old-time explorers. We follow our instincts, plus we're super tough. Okay, you'll lose and we'll be the winners. We'll see about that. So tell me, have you bought a map of the city too? And what about a couple of water bottles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and tell your mommy to make you sandwiches. <laughs> Sister Patricia, we saw a beggar looking for food in the trash. It was horrible. You know, there are poor people in the city that don't have enough food to eat. Now I feel terrible for having an ice cream. Don't worry. Eat your ice cream and give thanks to God for how good it tastes. We try to help people in the parish with whatever we can give them. Part of the money we raise in church goes towards buying food for the families who need it the most. We commend our work with the poor to St. Elizabeth of Hungary because she dedicated her own life to prayer and serving people in need. Do you want some more milk, little mistress? No, thank you. I've had enough. Does my little princess want me to send to the kitchen for some bread and honey? Thank you very much, but I don't want anything more. Wow. She was really rich. Yes, but despite all of her wealth, she lived in the spirit of angelical poverty. Really? But how could she live in poverty if she had so much? Well, you see, you can do it in two ways. By remaining detached from what you have and sharing it with people who are in need. And is that what St. Elizabeth did? Exactly. You see, when Elizabeth was 15, her father, the King of Hungary, gave her away in marriage. My dearest, it's my pleasure to present your future husband, Duke Ludwig of Thuringia. Elizabeth, I feel very fortunate to be marrying you. I promise to make you happy. What a handsome prince! He was. They were both very much in love. The day of the wedding was very special. Was it the happiest day of her life? <laughs> it probably was, but Elizabeth didn't want to wear a crown. But why? She was a princess. Yes, but she said, how can I wear such a beautiful crown before a king in a crown of thorns? Is that what detachment means? Yes, that's what I was talking about. I want to marry a prince too. Can you imagine? That would be so wonderful. Mom, Dad, I need to ask you something. Sounds important. Yes, I want you to tell me about how you first met and how you got married. <laughs> you want to learn about ancient history? You know, I think we're going to need the photo album for this. Those were very happy years. Yes, we didn't have a cent, but we didn't mind because we were in love. Well, we had just enough money to get married, but it was a struggle getting by at the end of the month. Just look how young we were. <laughs> look at you! We were so in love, and so we wanted to get married and be blessed by God, live together, have children. You know, Mom, I want to get married one day to a really handsome man. And if possible, I'd like him to be a prince, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're still very young. You'll meet the right man if God gives you a vocation to marriage. Why are you thinking about that now? 
because Sister Patricia has started to tell us the story of St. Elizabeth of Hungary. I see. Did you know that Elizabeth had three children? Just like you. That's right. She and her husband Ludwig loved each other very much. You know, I'm very happy. I'm pleased for you, my lady. You've always been a good woman and you deserve the best. Not a day goes by without me giving thanks for my husband. Your husband Ludwig is a fine gentleman. He's much more than that. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. He's good, devout, handsome, caring, and he loves God. Elizabeth gave thanks to God for her husband. She felt very fortunate. Dear Lord, if I love my husband so much, how much more should I love you? It's amazing how in love they were. Yes, it's like a fairy tale. Sister Patricia, do you think our parents love each other as much as Elizabeth and Ludwig? Oh, well, of course. The love between husband and wife is blessed by God. Tell us more about St. Elizabeth of Hungary. Now, let's see. Wartburg Castle, where St. Elizabeth lived, was at the top of a steep hill, much too steep for sick people to climb. So St. Elizabeth built a hospital at the bottom of the hill. And she would go there to feed the patients with her own hands, to make their beds, and to help them during the hottest days of the summer. She also gave money to poor children so they could go to school. She fed 900 poor people in the castle every day. She shared her wealth with the poor, didn't she? Yes, and that's why I say she lived a life of Christian simplicity. She shared what she had in an intelligent way. An intelligent way? Yes, that's right. Often, instead of giving someone money, she would find them a job so they could earn their own living. Lord, I give you thanks for everything I have. You've given me so much, and I want to help the poor. You're my guide. Please never leave my side. But that's not fair. Yeah, it's easy to be happy and thank God when you have so much. Yes, but her life wasn't that easy. Oh, no? No. Later on, Elizabeth had to overcome many difficulties. And the most important thing is to know that God is our guide. We have to trust in His providence in the good times and in the bad. Hello, boys. Father Michael, can we help you? They're heavy. That's okay, we're strong. We can take one bag each. Is this your weekly shopping? No, it's not for me. It's for an old lady who lives on her own and can't get out to the store. By the way, we just bought a compass. For the challenge in the park? Yeah, it's gonna help us find the treasure. That's great, you know. God should always be our compass in life. We should never become separated from Him because He guides us towards heaven, which is our goal in life. We have to do something for the poor people. Yeah, right, but what? We don't have any money. And we're not princesses like St. Elizabeth. Okay, you're right, but I have an idea. And what is it? We'll organize a food drive at school. You mean get people to bring food? Exactly, and then we'll share it out among the poor people. I like it, but we'll have to talk to the principal first. A food drive? That sounds excellent. We'll store the food here, and then we'll share it out among the poor people. I think that's a fantastic idea. I'll bring it up this afternoon at the parents' meeting, and we'll see what we can do. Good news, kids. At the parent-teacher meeting, we gave your food drive idea the green light. Yay! Along with some of the other parents, we'll take care of collecting the food. Father Michael and Sister Patricia will help us share it out among the poorest families. Helping the poor of the parish is commended to St. Elizabeth of Hungary. That's right. You know, one day Elizabeth happened to meet a leper in the middle of the road. And you know what she did? She gave him her bed to sleep in while her husband Ludwig was away. But Ludwig came back sooner than expected. My prince, my prince, you must come and see this. I don't think you're going to like it. What's the matter? Has something happened? It's your wife, sire. She is, she has a... Uh... Just finish your sentence. You're worrying me. She has allowed a leper to sleep in your bed. What? In my bed? We told her it was madness, sire, but she just went ahead. I will go up immediately. Instead of the leper, Ludwig saw a crucifix over the bed. He understood that Jesus rewards acts of kindness to the poor as if they were done to himself. But the servants were worried about Elizabeth's acts of charity. Lord Heinrich, you must do something. 
Something? What are you talking about? I'm talking about your sister-in-law. She's using up all the food in the castle, giving it away to the poor. If she goes on like this, soon there'll be nothing left. Do you realize how serious an accusation this is? I know, sire, but it is true. Very well. In that case, I will need some proof before I tell my brother, Prince Ludwig. Well, sire, very soon Lady Elizabeth will leave through that door with her pocket full of bread. You will see for yourself. Dear Elizabeth, what are you carrying under your dress? I, well, they're roses. Roses? But it's the middle of winter. That's impossible. I told you, sire. I told you she was taking food from the castle, and she does it behind our backs. Elizabeth, please don't lie to me. I want to know what you have there. But, 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 that's impossible. I saw her. That's amazing! But Paula and I can't do much for the poor because we're not princesses and we're not rich. You know, to a really poor person, you two are like princesses because you have so much more than them. You should follow St. Elizabeth's example. I've offered the Perry store to keep all the food you collect. Then we can distribute it. We'll call this operation the St. Elizabeth Food Drive. Did St. Elizabeth spend all her time with the poor? Right. Didn't she pray? Because saints pray a lot. St. Elizabeth prayed a lot, too. Do you know, my lady often gets up in the middle of the night and spends hours praying. While she prays, his lordship holds her hand because he's afraid she'll faint. My dear, you've been praying for a long time. You need to rest now. Don't waste your strength. But one day, calamity struck. Did she get sick from praying all the time? No. Her husband Ludwig went to fight in the Crusades. And just after her third child was born, her mother-in-law gave her some bad news. Elizabeth, my child. What is it? It's about Ludwig. Oh no, what has happened? Has he been captured? Is he a prisoner? If he is, then with God's help, we'll save him. No, no, my dear. Ludwig, Ludwig is dead. Then the world and all the happiness that is in it is dead for me. May God's will be done above all things. Amen. Amen. Elizabeth accepted the will of God, although she didn't understand why God had allowed it to happen. And didn't she get married again? She was still very young. No, she refused several offers of marriage and decided to dedicate herself fully to the poor. It must have been really tough for her. But she was rich and she could live in comfort for the rest of her life. Well, actually, that's not what happened. Her husband's successor banished her from the castle, and she had to run away with her three children. She had fed 900 people every day, but now she didn't even have enough money for breakfast. Mama, we're hungry. What are we going to do now? My dears, we must always place our faith in God. Everything is for the best. He'll never abandon us. Finally, some relatives took them into their home. And later, the king of Hungary made sure her property was returned to her. And she was rich again? Yes, but she didn't keep her riches to herself. She used the money to build a hospital and help many families in need. It's amazing that she went from being super rich to super poor, and she always trusted in God. Saint Elizabeth was very close to God through the good times and the bad times. God was always her compass. Hello, Alex. Hi. What is it? I overheard something Mom and Dad were saying. I'm really worried. My dad has lost his job because of the recession, you know. I understand. My mom seems worried, too. Sometimes, God allows us to go through hard times in our lives. But we are good people. So why is God punishing us like this? It's not a punishment from God. It's an opportunity for the whole family to become closer to pray and trust in God's providence because he is our father. Don't forget that God is our compass, just as he was for St. Elizabeth of Hungary. And why did St. Elizabeth wear a habit if she wasn't a nun? Well, you'll see. One good Friday after the service, when the altar in the church had been cleared, she knelt down before one of them and before several monks, she made a vow of poverty. 
From this time, I want to follow the example of St. Francis of Assisi and dedicate my life to the service of the poorest and most in need. She spent the last years of her life caring for the sick in her hospital. She lived in a small shack next to the hospital. Often, she had to weave cloth or catch fish to get money to buy medicine. It's amazing! She gave up all her money to care for the poor. Well, children, let us pray. What are we going to pray for? Today, we're going to pray for my plans and your mother's. Is it a secret? No, but I want you to trust us. I know what it is. I'll tell you later. We should always trust in God, just as St. Elizabeth of Hungary did. The food drive was a big success. Yes, people were very generous. Father Michael, can you tell us more about St. Elizabeth? Did you know that her people called her the Good Little Mother? Of course, she gave everything to the poor. A priest who met her wrote, I declare before God that I have rarely seen a woman so active in her work who leads a life of such prayer and contemplation. The Emperor Frederick II himself was impressed. The Venerable Elizabeth, so beloved of God, illuminates the shadows of this world like a bright star in the darkest night. How's it going, guys? This is so much fun. Yeah, I think we're going to win the treasure hunt. <laughs> and can you use that? Sure we can. Thanks to our compass, we're in the lead. Fantastic. I'll leave you to it. Good luck, boys. The next clue is hidden 20 paces to the northeast. Okay, let's see now. If we line the compass up with the north... That away. Let's go. Listen, everyone. The next clue is 30 paces to the south. Let's go. Hey, stop. What's the matter now? Didn't you say it was to the south? Well, that's over there. Uh, okay. Where were you the day they taught us about the points of the compass? I guess he was daydreaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, very funny. But everyone knows that the sun rises in the south. That's the west. The west? I don't know. South is where the pole is, right? Right. The South Pole is in the South. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But there's another pole. Since one of their two poles. Since, like, forever, Smarty. That's enough. It says here we have to go South, right? Come on, then. We can't waste time. Alex and Sergio are in the lead. Because they bought a compass. Is that so? Well, yeah. So why didn't you go with them, huh? Maybe you want to drink water from their bottles? Or a bite of the sandwiches their mommy's made. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. You do whatever you want. I intend to. We're going where I say. Let's move. So St. Elizabeth spent her whole life helping the poor? Yes, but she didn't live for very long. She died when she was 24. The Emperor Frederick II attended her funeral along with huge crowds of people from so many other countries and social classes that everybody there said they'd never seen such a well-intended and heartfelt funeral as that of Elizabeth of Hungary, the patron saint of the poor, nor did they expect to see one again. And did God do any miracles through her intercession? Hey, you sound like Alex. All he cares about are miracles. <laughs> well, you'll see. On the day of her death, a religious man broke his arm in an accident, and he lay in bed suffering terrible pain. Suddenly, he saw Elizabeth appear in his room, wearing a beautiful dress. My lady, you have always worn such simple dresses. Why do you wear such a fine one now? I'm going to heaven. I've died here on earth. Hold out your arm. It is whole again. Two days after her funeral, a Cistercian monk came to a grave. He had been suffering pains in his heart for years, and no doctor had been able to cure him. He knelt down next to the tomb and prayed for a long time. Suddenly, he felt he was completely cured. This was only one of the many miracles that moved the Pope to declare her a saint only four years after her death. Wow, that must be a record. <laughs> That's right. She was proclaimed a saint very quickly. winners of
of the treasure hunt are... Alex and Sergio. Put it there! Boys, the treasure in the chest is yours. We're the winners! And the losers are... Sergio, try to be a good winner. The sun rises in the south. Everybody knows that except you. Everybody knows you have no idea about the points of the compass. Now, there's no need to fight. You've learned a lesson from this contest, and that is that God is our compass. He's always with us to show us the right way. Just like he was with St. Elizabeth. Exactly. She always placed her trust in God. As she walked the road of life, she held God's hand in good times as well as bad. Alex, Sarah, Mom and I have something to tell you. I think I know what it is. That's impossible. I heard you talking the other day. You lost your job, didn't you? That's right. I didn't know that you, uh... I'm sorry. I overheard by accident. Well, that's not the most important news. It's not? What could be more important than that? Well, you see, Dad has been offered a better job. It's with a very successful company. I start work on Monday. That's awesome! <laughs> we should all give thanks to God. Yes, when one door closes, God opens another. St. Elizabeth, teach me to remember people who are going through hard times. Help me to see Jesus in them. Jesus, I ask you through the intercession of St. Elizabeth of Hungary to help me always to trust you because you know best. Help me remember that you are my compass in life. Amen.